Hey guys, Miss K here. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I got this super cute black and orange spooky set. All of the nail art is hand painted and this is a two and a half hour set. So if you guys would like to see how I created this, then go ahead and keep on watching. Alrighty, so jumping right in, I had to remove her previous set because she had gone to a nail salon to get this done. And generally, I don't like to work over other people's work. I will if it's requested, but generally I like to just take the entire set off, soak it off, and start from scratch. So that's what we're doing here. They had done it pretty thin, so there wasn't a whole lot of filing that I had to do but I'm using my 5-in-1 carbide bit by Panna and I'll link everything that I use in my video down below but now I'm going in with my straight edge clippers and I'm clipping the acrylic nails off so that way there's less filing to do I should have done this first but I didn't think about it until after I filed the first nail <laughs> so now going back in with that drill bit I am removing the polish and the acrylic that she had already had on her nails and then I'm going to use my Basque LA Pro Steamer to steam off her acrylic that's still left on the nails and I love this drill bit it's my favorite <laughs> so then here after it steamed I'm just going to be using a cuticle pusher to remove the acrylic that is on the nail as you can see it's literally like flimsy gunk <laughs> so I just pull off that that was the tip and then I'm just scratching off the remainder of the acrylic and then I'm going to be going in after I do this with a fine grit sanding band on my mandrel bit and I'm just going to use that on like a low speed to remove any extra acrylic that's still on the nails so now after I've gotten it all off I'm going to be pushing back her cuticles this is just to expose any dry skin or dried up cuticle that may still be on her nail plate then I'm going in with my needle point drill bit this came in a 30 pack and I love it because it's rainbow and it's super pointy but I'm going to be using this up her side walls and then around the cuticle and back down the other side and I really really like using this because it gets up underneath the skin a little bit and really lifts up that cuticle then I'll be going in with my cuticle ball bit and this came in a three pack it was two cuticle ball bits and a needlepoint bit that I had gotten off of Amazon and like I said earlier I'll link everything down below so that if you guys want to get it you can find it that way um, and then I just use this around the cuticle area to really buff off the cuticles and anything that's still on the nails then going in with my cuticle nippers which I got these ones from the Dollar I was about to say Dollar Tree the Dollar General <laughs> and I love them they work so good so I'm just going to use these to clip off any extra cuticle that's still on her nails um, I've seen a lot of nail techs are able to remove the cuticle with the cuticle ball bit but I'm not able to do that I haven't figured out how to do that yet so I like to go in with my nippers I think it makes them look so nice and clean Ready? then I dust off all the little dusties and we're going right in to applying the nail tips I got these tips off of Amazon as well I love Amazon they have so many good nail products if you haven't looked on there for stuff go ahead and check them out trust me you will not regret it they have basically everything so after I apply them I'm using my tip cutters to get them as long or as short as she wants them um, I like to have my client look at the length that I cut it to let me know yes or no if they like it. 
So then I'm going in and cutting all the rest of them. Then I'm going to be using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm just going to crispen up the edges of the nail to make sure that it's nice and even with the side walls of her free edge. And then I also go across the tip to make sure that it's nice and straight and squared off. So I do that to all of the nails and then I'll be back. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to be using my Mia Secret Nail Prep. This is a dehydrator, and dehydrators use just to remove any oils from the nail, so that way we can make sure that our acrylic application has a better chance of sticking. Then I'm using the Mia Secret Extra Bond Primer, and primer primes the nails. <laughs> and then I'm using Young Nails Protein Bond. I like to use all three of these together. I feel like it gives it extra adhesion so I don't have to worry about any of the nails lifting or popping off. Alrighty, going into the acrylic application, I'm going to be using Mia Secrets Clear Acrylic Powder to do a thin layer of clear on all of her nails so that way when she comes back, and I file off the colored acrylic that will be going on top. I'll have this thin layer of clear underneath so I don't damage her natural nail. So I'm going to apply that on all of her nails. And I also feel like this gives it a nice base and a nice foundation for the colored acrylic also. Okay, so I'm starting with my lightest color first, which is Nude. And the nude color that I'm using is by Kiara Sky. And it's in the color Bougie Beige. It's a part of their cover acrylic line. So I'm just applying this to her middle finger. And then I start kind of where the natural nail met the tip and then I just brought that down then I'm going to wipe off this little extra ball here <laughs> then I'm going in with another bead of acrylic and I'm going to place that right above where I had placed the last bead and I'm going to kind of push it up a little bit and then drag it down so that way it blends nicely with the bead that I already placed and as you can see I just stuck my finger into <laughs> the wet acrylic so I'm gonna fix that cover it up with another bead <laughs> and smooth it all out and then I'm going in with my last bead of acrylic that I'll be pushing up into the cuticle area so this is the last bead to cover the nails then I'm going to be wiping that down so that way it has a nice blend and I'm applying one more bead right here in the center to kind of smooth out everything. Um, I decided to keep my application process here in the actual speed that I'm going. So that way you guys can see exactly how long it takes. And I thought that was the last bead, but it wasn't. Here's another one. <laughs> so... If you've been watching me for a little while, then you know I don't follow any one, two, or three bead method. I just kind of do what works for me and go from there. So I'm applying my acrylic. I'm getting it as smooth as I possibly can. That way when I go back in to file, I don't have a whole bunch of filing to do. So there's the middle nail. And yep, there's another bead I'm adding. So I added this one at the tip of the nail because it just wasn't thick enough for my preference. I like to make sure that they're not too thick, but they're still thick enough that they aren't gonna break or anything and that they have a nice structure to them. So now moving on to her pinky nail and also on her pointer finger, I am using Valentino Beauty Pure's Orange Acrylic in the number 110. I love 
this orange it's so bright and vibrant and super cute and honestly i have a problem with valentino beauty pure's black acrylic that i've used but this one it works so good i love it so i'm just applying that to the pinky and that first bead i put it where the tip meets the natural nail that's generally where i try to apply the first bead especially on shorter nails um and then i'm going to be you know keeping my brush on either side of the nail to keep the shape of the nail so that it's not all wonky looking and then i'm going to apply another bead of acrylic and i'm putting this one a little closer to the cuticle area but not too too close because i'm going to add one more bead up there just to really fill it in so i wipe along the top of this to keep the shape and then like i said i'm going to be going in with another bead at the cuticle area so it's okay if it's a little far <laughs> but right now i'm just putting some on the sides to kind of cover up the tip that was still showing there were a little bit of spaces missing and i wanted to make sure that i filled those in before i went any farther with the nail so the next bead that i'm going to be placing is going to be the one that's right next to the cuticle like i was saying and i kind of push it up and then wipe it down so that way it blends nicely with the nail and the rest of the acrylic that i had applied so then i'm cleaning up around the side walls and the cuticle area and i'm making sure that i like the shape and the structure of the nail and then i'm going to move on to the next one so basically i just do the same process on all of the nails and i left it in real speed for you guys so like i said earlier you can see my actual process and how long it takes me to do it so i'm going to let you guys watch me finish up applying the acrylic to these nails and then i'll be back Okay, so I lost the footage of me applying the acrylic to the ring finger, but I also did that one in black as well. And the black acrylic that I'm using is number 118 by Valentino Beauty Pure. Um, this is the one I was talking about that I struggle with. I was trying really hard to get my application process here nice and smooth. But it still kind of ended up a little crazy looking, a little wonky, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. This is the black acrylic that I have. This is the one I'm going to use. <laughs> so, I don't know what it is. Like, maybe it dries too fast because it'd be super wet when I place it and then it starts drying up on me before I get to move it around. I don't know. It could just be me. But, <laughs> so... I'm using 118 by Valentino Beauty Pure, like I said before, and I'm just going to let you guys watch my process. It's a struggle, trial and error. I'm still learning how to use this acrylic. <laughs> so, yes, I'll be back once I'm done applying this nail.
As y'all can see, I was just going through so much with this acrylic. So if you guys have any recommendations for a good black acrylic, please let me know so I can get a new one. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna be going in with my five-in-one one safety carbide bit from Panna. This is literally my favorite drill bit, like I say every time that I use it. Um, I don't think there's gonna be one that will replace it, but let me not speak too soon because you never know. <laughs> but I do love this drill bit. I can get right up on her cuticle area without hurting her, even though I've never hurt any of my other clients and I don't know if she has like really thin sensitive skin but I actually did cut her with this drill bit which I was surprised about so that was crazy to me but it's still my favorite drill bit even though it hurt my client well it didn't hurt her but it did cut her but she said that it didn't hurt she barely felt it so <laughs> But I'm going to be using this to go around the cuticle area. And that's what I love about it so much is I can get really close to the cuticle and get the acrylic as flush to the natural nail as I possibly can. And then it also does a wonderful job going along the surface of the nail and really smoothing out the acrylic that I've applied. And then I also love to use it underneath the nail because I feel like it really helps with the structure and the shape of the nail as well. So it's just an all around great drill bit to have. So if you don't have this, I will link it down below as well. And you guys definitely should purchase this drill bit. And if not this one, then maybe any other five in one carbide drill bit um this is the only one that i have i'm going to be repurchasing it so that way i have a couple of them but i'm sure all five in one carbide drill bits work the same so i would definitely recommend getting you one if you don't have one already Alrighty guys, so going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file, um, I'm going to be using this to crispen up the shape of the sides of her nails and then also across the tip of the nail to give it that nice squared off shape. And honestly, I don't know if anybody doesn't shape their nails after they're done applying the acrylic, make sure that you do that because this really changes the game of your acrylics they look so much more smooth and so nice so clean i love how they look and it just really gives it that finished polished look Alrighty, so now i'm dusting the nails off and then after i do that i'm going in with a paper towel with some young nail swipe on it and I'm just going to be wiping her nails off to get any of those little dusties off and out from around the cuticle area and to further dehydrate the nail so that it's ready for my gel polish application. Now the gel polish that I'm going to be using is the Beatles top coat. I love this top coat. If you've been watching me, then you know I love this one. It's my favorite one. I've tried other ones, the D&D, &D, and I've tried the Kiara Sky um, 
acrylic top coat which I don't like for some reason it bubbles up on me I don't know it might just be me but I have that problem with it this one I have no problems with I love this gel top coat it's my favorite so I'm applying that to all of her nails and then I also went in and applied matte top coat to the two black fingernails Alrighty, so now for the most fun part, the nail art. Okay, so on the first finger, I am applying or creating <laughs> a spider web. And I'm doing this using my nail art brushes from McCart and then also the Savvy Land painting gels. Um, I really like these painting gels. I kind of wish they were a little thicker, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> So I'm using this to create the spider web and I'm just making all of these lines going out in like a starburst effect from the top corner of the nail. And then after I do this, I will be applying some of the orange painting gel to the middle finger, the nude one. And I'm doing this in like two little bumps that aren't perfectly even with each other because this is going to be a jack-o-lantern. So you kind of want to make them, um, you know, one side shorter than the other side. Then I have her put that in the nail lamp. Then on the pinky, I'm creating a bat. So I took two little lines and put them together into like the shape of a V or a Y. Then I'm going to be drawing the wings and how I do that is I just draw a little curved line then I'm not very good at explaining these kinds of things and then I'm drawing the bottom half of the wing and I just bring it into a couple of little points so that way it resembles like a bat wing and then I just fill that in and I do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to let you guys watch me do this because, like I said, I'm not very good at explaining it, so it's easier seen than explained. <laughs> One thing I do want to make sure I mention is that with any nail art that you're going to be doing, just make sure that you practice beforehand. Um, that way you can get it looking at least, if not exactly how you wanted it to look, pretty close. So now going in to spill it, to spill in, <laughs> to fill in the spider web, I am doing these little curved lines and in between each of those straight lines. Then I'm also making sure that I add some curved lines along the outside of the spider web as well. So that way it kind of just brings the whole illusion together and I don't have any empty areas where there's no spider webbing. So I'm just repeating that same process to the entire nail and then I'm gonna let you guys watch me do that and I will be back.
Okay, so now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna have her cured in the light. Then I'm gonna start working on the jack-o'-lantern again. So I'm using the black gel paint to outline the top of the jack-o'-lantern like this. And then I bring those two lines to crisscross each other. So it's not directly at a point, you want them to cross. And then I'm going in and I'm drawing the little stem of the pumpkin. So I just do this by making an upside down triangle. And in between every piece of nail art I do, I have her cured in the light for me. So now on the pinky, I'm drawing a second bat. And I just do this the exact same way that I did the first one. So I start with a little V or Y. Then I draw the top part of the wing. And then I go and I'm going to draw the under part of the wing. So as you can see, I like to make sure that I draw the outline first, and then I go back in and fill it in with the black painting gel. And then I just do the exact same thing to the other side of the bat, and I kind of try and get that other wing to resemble this one, so that way it's a little bit symmetrical. It's not going to be perfect, but as close as I can get it. <laughs> Alrighty, so now I'm going to be working on the face of my jack-o'-lantern. So for the eyeballs, I am drawing two little curved lines like this. And I want them to point upward so it kind of gives like an angry appearance. So I'm going to do that for both of the eyes. And I want it to come to a point in the center and at the end of the eyes. So here, that was kind of a little too thick, so I'm going to wipe it off, and then I'm going to go back in and try again. <laughs> and honestly, guys, if you mess up, it's fine. You know, just wipe it away and try again. So here I am with just a little amount of polish on my brush, and I'm just going to be drawing these eyeballs in, trying to get them as close and matching as possible i mean like i said earlier with the bat it's not going to be perfect but just get it as close as you can you know when you think it looks good then you're good <laughs> so here i had to brush some away because it was a little bit too big then i'm going to add some more in underneath and i'm just drawing in these eyeballs so they look how i want them to then I'm going to go in and do a little upside down V to create the nose like that. Then I go in and I do the mouth and it's just a bunch of zigzag lines. That's how I'm creating the um, jack-o'-lantern mouth. Now I'm going to draw the little vine coming from the top of the pumpkin next to the stem. So to do this I just did a curved line and then I'm going to do another curved line where they crisscross each other and then I'm going to connect the two little crisscrosses with a little 
C. So that way it does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, just like that. Now for the spiders on the ring finger, I'm using a dotting tool and I'm just making two dots just like this. Then I'm gonna go back in with my liner brush and draw the legs. So I do a long leg from the center and then one that's a little bit shorter in front of that. Then for the other two legs, I draw them going upwards and I just kind of connect them in the same manner so I just draw two legs up and then two legs going down if that makes sense <laughs> if not you can obviously see what I'm doing here so that kind of makes it a little bit easier to understand what I mean so just like that and then on the other side I'm also going to go in and draw two more legs that go down so that way our spider has a total of eight legs so for the thumb I'm going to be repeating the exact same process as what I did on the ring finger so my two dots and then two lines going down and two lines going up on either side and when I draw the legs I want to make sure that the leg that's closest to the body is shorter than the one that goes on the outside this just gives it the illusion of really being a spider <laughs> or at least I feel like it does Also, it's okay if your nail art isn't perfect. As long as you like it and your client likes it, that's really all that matters in the end. Um, just be proud of your work. You took your time to do all of this. <laughs> then to finish off the pumpkin, I'm adding two more little black lines at the top of it to give it more of that um, rigid look. And then I'm also going to be adding pupils to the eyeballs with yellow. I'll be adding two little yellow dots. And then I mixed the yellow gel paint with the orange gel paint. And I added some extra lines to the jack-o'-lantern to give it a little bit of extra dimension. But I didn't get that on recording, so you won't see that part. And then I went back in on the mouth and just thickened up the black lines a little bit so that way it looks more defined. And I love how this look turned out. So this is my little jack-o'-lantern and he looks super creepy and fix his eyeball up right there a little bit. <laughs> and there he is. So. This is the final product, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you out. Maybe you wanna recreate this set. Um, yeah, so if you like this video, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for any future videos that I may post. Well, that I'll definitely post. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.